been waiting so patiently. When you're just sitting waiting, it seems like it. you hear every little tick of the clock. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you for another opportunity to come into your presence tonight. Father, Lord, we welcome your Holy Spirit here, Father, Lord, to touch and heal. Lord, and come alongside of us, Father, Lord, we just lift your name on high. Father, give you praise, Lord, and we thank you for it. In Jesus' name, amen. You give life, you are love, you bring light to the darkness, you give hope, you restore. Every heart that is broken, great are you, Lord. It's your breath in our lungs, so we pour out our praise. We pour out our praise, it's your breath in our lungs. God. 
Jesus. Thank you, Father. Jesus at the center of it all. Oh, Jesus at the center of it all. From beginning Jesus be the center of it all. Jesus be the center of it all. From beginning to the end, it will always be, it's always been you, Jesus. Jesus.
make it a prayer as we continue to sing that. Jesus, Jesus be the center of Jesus, the church is yours. Lord, you bought it with your blood. Lord, we're your people. Lord, we want you to have your rightful place, Lord, at the center of it all. Lord God, we don't want to compartmentalize our lives and say, well, this is my family. This is, this is my family compartment, or this is my work compartment. This is my friend compartment, but this is my church compartment. Lord, no. Be the center of it all, Jesus. Be the Lord of every area of our life. Lord, you know, I just feel we need to just say, just surrender every area of your life, every area, every area, the present, the future. Just give it all to Jesus. Amen. Amen. Lord, you, you are always victorious. Lord, you're going to, you're going to come back on that white horse, Lord, and the, the armies of heaven, the saints, Lord, following behind you. But, Lord, you're always out in front. You're always leading the charge. Lord, you're always victorious in our lives, in this world. Lord, we give you praise. We give you honor. Hallelujah. Oh, blessed be your name, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. There is none like him. Amen. There is none like him. Hallelujah. He's in a category of his own. Praise the Lord. He alone is holy. He alone is good. He alone is righteous. And Lord, we thank you that you've given your blood for us. You have credited your righteousness to us. Lord, we can only enjoy your presence and have hope, Lord, in being in heaven. Lord, with you for all eternity because of you. Lord, it's all you. Lord, we love you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know, maybe you've been having a difficult week. Maybe the enemy's been coming down on you hard. You know, the Lord wants to encourage you. He wants to strengthen you tonight. He's, he's designed church to, to, to be that place, not to come and, and have a program, but to come and be strengthened, comforted, encouraged. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If you've been, you've been having a tough week, just raise your hand to the Lord and say, God, it's me tonight, Lord. I need your touch. Lord, I need your grace. Oh, Lord, you know where your people are at, God. You know how the enemy has been coming against them. But, Lord, your word says when the, when the enemy comes in like a flood, the Spirit of the Lord will raise up a standard against it. Holy Spirit, raise up that standard. Lord, I pray peace over your people's minds. Lord, I pray, God, a calmness. Jesus, you are the shalom. Hallelujah. You are the Prince of Peace. Lord, bless your people with peace. Oh, God. Oh, God, Lord, we just thank you, Lord, that no wisdom, no counsel, no plan can succeed against the Lord. Your word says that. Jesus, we just pray, God, that you'll move in your people's lives tonight. God, sometimes, Lord, it just seems like a spaghetti mess. But, Lord Jesus, you know how to fix it. You know how to cut through. You know how to bring down the evil one. And, Lord, we give you praise. You are the victor. Lord, I pray blessing on your people tonight, those who are present, those who are watching online. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Blessing on your people. Hallelujah. Praise you, God. Praise you, God. Amen. We want, Lord, we lift up, Lord, uh, the, the pig family the pig family before you and and Lord Robert passed away Lord uh, unexpectedly and God they need your comfort Lord they need your touch and we pray for that tonight Lord Katie who's here Lord she's uh, dealing with headaches and uh, and uh, we pray God for Katie Lord we pray your healing touch upon her and uh, you know I just feel you know 
Some ladies, you want to lay hands on Katie? And, uh, you know, the Bible says that these signs shall follow them that believe they shall lay their hands on the sick and they shall recover. Mona, you can lay your hand on Katie also. And uh, Lord, according to your word, we lift our sister before you. And uh, God, whatever is the cause of this, Jesus, we ask that you would take care of it. Lord, bless and touch our sister this evening. Hallelujah, Jesus, in your name, in your name. And, and uh, uh, Sandra is here tonight. She's, she needs a touch. And go ahead and lay hands on Sandra where she's at. Uh, she's uh, uh, been diagnosed with some some things in her her uh, stomach her uh, gallbladder's not working kidney infection and gall uh, bladder she needs a touch from the Lord God we just thank you Lord you you are our Savior Lord you are our healer Lord you are with us tonight God thank you that you're here you're walking among us we love you we welcome you God right now Lord we thank you we believe you for healing God, because you are the God that heals us. Father, you sent your word to heal us. Jesus, you came, the word of God, and you picked up our infirmities and carried our sorrows, our diseases. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Lord, tonight, God, we lift up your people, God. Uh, Kay is not able to be here this evening. We pray your healing touch upon her. God, she has had chemotherapy today. Lord, your word says the spirit quickens our mortal body. Lord, quicken her body. Lord, lift her up. God, for Jennifer, Lord. God, for Brad. Lord, uh, others, Lord, who are dealing with cancer and undergoing uh, uh chemotherapy lord we pray strength and grace and healing deliverance jesus you are the lord jesus you are the lord god we pray for joe that you would bless him god that you would uh, bring health to him and and uh, god we thank you for that father in jesus name lord uh, a man by the name of uh, danny moon uh, Lord, uh, he might have cancer. God, uh, we pray, God, that you would just draw him to yourself and, and have grace on him. Lord, for Samuel Ward, and, and uh, uh, let's see, he's having a scan, Lord. He's had chemotherapy, and now he's having a scan, and we pray for good reports for him. And Lori Bauer, Lord, undergoing chemotherapy, God, bless her and strengthen her. Father, in Jesus' name, Lord, we... Uh, uh, lift up Boone Lunsford, uh, five months old and has COVID. And uh, let's see, Colton and Mercedes uh, uh, Lunsford. Yeah, uh, uh, temperature and sore throat. Lord, we pray, God, that nothing, nothing bad would come of this. But Lord, that you would protect this family. Lord, that you would rid them of this thing. Jesus, we pray in your authority, Lord, that this COVID, Lord, this virus, we curse it, that it would die, it would not multiply, it would not bring their bodies any harm, Lord, but you would bless, bless them, Father, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. Lord, lift up my daughter Chloe before you. She's uh, flying again, and uh, Lord, we just pray, God, a safe, safe trip, and and to the from the plane to the car, and, and then the the, the forty-five minute uh, or an hour and a half, I think, trip to back to college. Lord, uh, watch over her, keep her safe in every way. Lord, we thank you. We give you praise. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. You are Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Well, it's good to be in church. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Well, let's continue to bless the Lord in our, our giving. Amen.
Beverly. Thank you, Jay. Praise the Lord. Thank you, uh, Chesley, for your faithfulness in the sound booth. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Well, I needed to uh, uh, clarify something that I had uh, said last Sunday. And uh, uh, if uh, the only public speaker that has ever uh, not misspoken was Jesus. <laughs> you know, he is the only one that has never had to apologize or say, oops, you know, I, I meant to say this, but it came out wrong. Well, uh, last Sunday, um, uh, I, I knew what my brain wanted to say, but my mouth uh, garbled up the translate or the communication. And uh, the way it sounded was that Jennifer had uh, skipped her doctor appointment to avoid hearing about her test results. And, uh, and so um, if, if someone were to have asked me, uh, Pastor, did, uh, did Jennifer skip her chemotherapy treatment because she didn't want to hear the test results? I would have said, huh? No, uh, her husband just had, uh, you know, he was in the hospital and he had to have some stints put in. She needed to be with him. And uh, also when she undergoes chemotherapy, uh, you know, she wants her husband to, to be with her. That's what I would have said. And so, uh, but anyway, so I, I went back and I listened um, to, uh, to what I'd said, and it definitely sounded like it, <laughs> you know, that anyway, so I knew, I knew the truth of the matter. God knew that I knew the truth of the matter, but um, uh, it was brought to my attention, uh, and so I thought, well, I need to, yeah, I need to straighten that out, and so, uh, but anyway, if ever if ever I say something that makes you go, huh, <laughs> or, or gets you upset, you know, please let me know. And uh, I, am, I am human. And so, um, yeah, so praise the Lord. So maybe afterwards we can have confessional. I'll be up here. And <laughs> okay. I tell you, and this is not an excuse, folks, before, before last Sunday service, I, I said, boy, you know, I just, you know, I've just been really struggling with physical, you know, things. And, and so I, uh, I started taking Zyrtec this week, and it, and it cleared up some things, but then it caused other, other issues. And uh, Zyrtec, it just makes me so tired. And so uh, my brain is half-baked tonight. And so if I say anything that doesn't sound right, <laughs> give, me, give me more grace. And and uh, my wife will be sure to let me know afterwards, too. And so you can count on that. <laughs> so, so anyway, a uh, couple of announcements. Uh, next Wednesday already is going to be Model Men and Faith Walkers, 630. And boy, uh, time is just, the, the months are flying, and it almost seems like we're having Faith Walkers and and uh, model men, yeah, every other week, it seems like. And so uh, you, you'll want to be there and, and have a meal and uh, some fellowship and, and, uh, and hear, you know, get into the word. And also, um, I want to, uh, there is a, uh, this is the only time that, you know, you, anyway, you need to be a senior to be a part of this uh, senior retreat is happening at Lake Williamson Christian Center, uh, September 25th through 27th. The information is in the foyer, and you can sign up for that, and uh, you will have a great time. You will. Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise God. Well, um, tonight I want to talk about an incident where 36 people were killed related to an AI incident. And uh, now I'm laughing already because that's a real good hook. And I'm telling you the truth, and it's in the Bible. Okay, so um, I put that as a, as a lead-in. So if you're watching online, just hang with me. I'm not, I'm not uh, telling you a, uh, uh, a mistruth, but, um, but it's not what you think. Okay, but we're going to find out in Scripture um, how not to get killed by an AI <laughs> incident, 
and uh, how, to, how to be victorious over that. But you know what? I think we better just pray right now. So, <laughs> Heavenly Father, we just thank you for our time together. And Lord, um, it's wonderful to come together, Lord, to sincerely worship you. And uh, Lord, that takes place, it, it, Lord, at Lighthouse. God, we, we're not singing to, to get emotions worked up or, or singing to, 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 to pull the correct lever on the, uh, the heavenly um, uh, whatever uh, to, to, get our, to get our answer or, or whatever it might be. Lord, Lord, we worship you because we love you. We, we worship you because we are so grateful to you. And Lord, you're here. And, and Lord, you've come to, to bless us and encourage us. And Lord, I need extra grace tonight. Lord, you've given me a word, and I need your extra grace to, to communicate it. And uh, Lord, let us be teachable tonight. And uh, Lord, any hindrance of the enemy, Lord, we pray it would be driven out right now in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the Lord. Um, so where in the Bible is AI talked about? Where do you find AI? It's in there. It's AI. You can, you can do a word search. AI is in the Bible. What's that? Nope. It's uh, Joshua in Joshua chapter 7. We're going to be there. But before we get there, uh, who here could tell me what the 10th commandment is? Out of the 10 commandments, what is the very 10th commandment? Yeah, coveting. It's coveting. Okay, this is the 10th commandment found in Exodus 20, uh, verse 17 and following. You shall not covet your neighbor's house. You shall not covet your neighbor's wife or his male or female servant, his ox, donkey, or anything that belongs to your neighbor. Okay, so coveting is desiring, longing for, lusting for. A lot of times we connect lust with uh, sexual matters, but a person can lust after a piece of pie. You can, <laughs> you can lust after, you know, it, uh, it's, in fact, biblically, it's, you know, greed and lust. It's, greed is just a person lusting for money. I just got to have it. I just got to have it. You know, and... Uh, many people have um, uh, ruined their uh, financial <laughs> standing <laughs> and uh, maybe even their marriage because I just have to have this car. I just have to have this new outfit. I just have to have it, you know. And honestly, that's coveting. And so, so coveting is really desiring, lusting for things. But specifically, the Tenth Commandment is something that belongs to somebody else, Okay. And so, um, now if you remember concerning Jericho, which, uh, which, we, uh, uh, which was the center of the message uh, last Sunday, well, really uh, Rahab, but um, the, the Israelites had this instructions, these instructions from the Lord. The city and all that is in it are to be devoted to the Lord. Only Rahab the prostitute and all who are with her in her house shall be spared because she hid the spies we sent. But keep away from the devoted things so that you will not bring about your own destruction by taking any of, by taking any of them. Otherwise, you will make the camp of Israel liable to destruction and bring trouble on it. All the silver and gold and the articles of bronze and iron are sacred to the Lord and must go into his treasury. Okay, so um, tonight our text is Joshua chapter 7, and I did not put it in the computer because it would be um, too cumbersome to try to read from that. And I encourage you, uh, when, I, when I read the Bible, you know, you're welcome to follow along. Honestly, for myself, I'd rather just kind of sit back and listen, be, be read to, listen to it, as long as your mind doesn't start wandering, okay? God help you with that. But this is, um, I'm reading out of the NIV translation, 
and uh, uh, Joshua chapter 7. But the Israelites were unfaithful. Okay, now, chapter 6, they just took care of Jericho, okay? Now, but the Israelites were unfaithful in regard to the devoted things. Achan, son of Carmi, the son of Zimri, the son of Zerah, of the tribe of Judah, took some, took some of them. So the Lord's anger burned against Israel. Now Joshua sent men from Jericho to Ai, hey, there it is, which is near Beth-Avon, it's the name of a city, to the east of Bethel and told them, go up and spy out the region. So the men went up and spied out Ai. Okay, for those of you who are just listening and you're not familiar with this, it is spelled A-I, <laughs> okay? <laughs> that is the spelling. Okay, verse 3. When they returned to Joshua, they said, not all the army will have to go up against Ai. Send two or three thousand men to take it, and do not weary the whole army, for only a few people live there. So about three thousand went up, but they were routed by the men of Ai, who killed about 36 of them. They chased the Israelites from the city gate as far as the stone quarries and struck them down on the slopes. At this, the hearts of the people melted in fear and became as water. Then Joshua tore his clothes and fell face down to the ground before the ark of the Lord, remaining there till evening. The elders of Israel did the same and sprinkled dust on their heads. That's a, a sign of, of mourning and humbling oneself. And Joshua said, Alas, sovereign Lord, why did you ever bring this people across the Jordan to deliver us into the hands of the Amorites to destroy us? If only we had been content to stay on the other side of the Jordan. Pardon your servant, Lord. What can I say now that Israel has been routed by its enemies? The Canaanites and the other people of the country will hear about this, and they will surround us and wipe out our name from the earth. What then will you do for your own great name? Verse 10, the Lord said to Joshua, Stand up! What are you doing down on your face? <laughs> Israel has sinned. They have violated my covenant, which I commanded them to keep. They have taken some of the devoted things. They have stolen they have lied. They have put them with their own possessions. That is why the Israelites cannot stand against their enemies. They turn their backs and run because they have been made liable to destruction. I will not be with you anymore unless you destroy whatever among you is devoted to destruction. Wow. Okay. Reading on verse 13. Go consecrate the people. Tell them, and, and to consecrate, what, what that means is they would take a bath, they would wash their clothes, okay? They, uh, they would, um, you know, present themselves clean before the Lord, okay? Um, tell them, consecrate yourselves in preparation for tomorrow, for this is what the Lord, the God of Israel, says. There are devoted things among you, Israel. You cannot stand against your enemies until you remove them. In the morning, present yourselves tribe by tribes. The tribe the Lord chooses shall come forward clan by clan. The clan the Lord chooses shall come forward family by family. And the family the Lord chooses shall come forward man by man. Whoever is caught with the devoted things shall be destroyed by fire, along with all that belongs to him. He has violated the, violated the covenant of the Lord and has done an outrageous thing in Israel. Early the next morning, Joshua had Israel come forward by tribes, and Judah was chosen. The clans of Judah came forward, and the Zerahites were chosen. He had the clan of the Zerahites come forward by families, and Zimri was chosen. Joshua had his family come forward man by man, and Achan, son of Carmi, the son of Zimri, the son of Zerah, of the tribe of Judah, was chosen. Then Joshua said to Achan, My son, give glory to the Lord, the God of Israel, and honor him. Tell me, what have you done? Do not hide it from me. Achan replied, It is true. I have sinned against the Lord, the God of Israel. 
This is what I have done when I saw in the plunder a beautiful robe from Babylonia, 200 shekels of silver and a bar of gold weighing 50 shekels. I coveted them and took them. They are hidden in the ground inside my tent with the silver underneath. So Joshua sent messengers and they ran to the tent and there it was hidden in his tent with the silver underneath. They took the things from the tent, brought them to Joshua and all the Israelites and spread them out before the Lord. You know what? I'm going to uh, pause there for a moment. What was happening, how the separating was happening, it wasn't that someone was hearing the voice of God. Okay, the priest had the Urim and the Thummim. Uh, remember how they, they cast lots? Uh, to us on the outside, it would seem like they're rolling the dice. It's chance. But what it was doing was it was eliminating a person. You, you know, if, if you are saying, okay, God, and we don't do this today, okay, so don't think we're going to do this. Um, God is the one who orchestrated this. He set this in place, and it wasn't chance because God was saying, I'm going to make it fall according to the truth. And so what that would honestly do, that was good because it was taking away human, uh, human thoughts, emotions, inclinations. You know, well, I'm, it wasn't having a good day today. Did God say that or didn't he? <laughs> well, I think he did. You're dead. Okay, so, this, so they're casting lots, but even though the lot was cast and it fell to, uh, to Achan, there still had to be evidence. Evidence was brought forward, and, and, and there it was. He had it. He confessed it, and evidence was brought forward. You know, the, the Bible, uh, God in his, uh, because God is just. He cares about justice, and um, he has put in place at the testimony of two or three witnesses. Let everything be established. He says, no one is to be put to death by one witness. Okay, and so that's, that's, that's a, a good thing. And so um, even in our, in our time today, uh, whether civil matters or church matters, we need to know, you know, there needs to be evidence. There needs to be witnesses. Somebody can't say, oh, well, I heard, you know, heard God say this or that. You, you can't have that. So, um, in fact, um, uh, there was, um, there, back when Stacy and I first started out in ministry, and there was this lady in the church, and she was known as a prophetess, and uh, the church ended up not being happy with the pastor because the people in the church were racist, and they didn't want him reaching uh, Indians, and they didn't want him... Uh, he, he was having uh, revival meetings. God was really beginning to use him. And so she started having these crazy prophecies, and, uh, and it, was, it was sad. There was no evidence against it. It caused a lot of problem in the church, and, um, and it's a very sad thing. And so no matter how spiritual a person is, there's, you got to go according to witnesses and evidence. Amen? Praise the Lord. Okay, so... Um, So the Bible says, let's see, verse 22. So Joshua sent messengers and they ran to the tent and there it was hidden in his tent with the silver underneath. They took the things from the tent, brought them to Joshua and all the Israelites and spread them out before the Lord. Then Joshua, together with all Israel, took Achan, son of Zerah, the silver, the robe, the gold bar, his sons and daughters, his cattle, donkeys and sheep, his tent and all that he had to the valley of Achor. Joshua said, why have you brought this trouble on us? The Lord will bring trouble on you today. Then all Israel stoned him. And after they had stoned the rest, they burned them. Over Achan, they heaped up a large pile of rocks, which remains to this day. Then the Lord turned his fierce anger, uh, turned from his fierce anger. Therefore, that place has been called the Valley of Achor, which means the Valley of Trouble. So um, tonight the message is really centered on coveting, coveting. Achan knew that 
they were already told right before this battle, um, right before Jericho, the battle of Jericho, it all belongs to the Lord. Now, let's put some perspective on this. This man, Achan, just saw and partic participated in two miracles. The first miracle was the, the Lord God stopped the Jordan and they walked through on dry ground. The second miracle was without, uh, you know, coming against the physical building, they, they followed God's directions and, and on the, after marching around seven days and then the, the last day they marched seven times and they shouted and the walls came down. Like I said, the walls didn't crumble down. The wall went down like an elevator. <laughs> and they miraculously went in and took the city. So, and he knew ahead of time, everything belongs to God. You are not to touch anything. It belongs to the Lord. Folks, Achan had such a disregard for God. He had such a lack of fear of the Lord. And he may have even had an entitlement. I know how warfare works. You defeat the enemy and you get the spoils. And you know what? God and, and Joshua called it devoted things. But when Achan talks, he calls it spoils. Buddy, it wasn't spoils. It was God's. It wasn't yours. His mindset was, I ought to have these spoils. And it's like, no, his mindset should have been, God Almighty brought us into the promised land, gave us the city miraculously, and it's his. I'm not touching it. Because to be, remember I talked about it was the city of destruction and it was all given over to destruction because of sin and everything was to be destroyed. And God already told them, if you touch the things of the city of destruction, you're going to make yourself liable. And that's what he did. He did it. And so, you know, we can read the same words that he, that Achan said in his confession to Joshua, you hear it concerning Eve being tempted with the tree. I saw, I coveted. Okay, Achan said, I coveted. Eve saw that it was, it, she desired it. Those are the same Hebrew words. And I took those three things. I saw, I desired, or coveted, and I took. Okay, same thing. Well, you know what? We can steal from God today. You say, well, how can we steal from God? Well, I'm going to go out of the order than what I have written down here. Uh, but I didn't read the full article, but there's this pastor's wife in hot trouble. She embezzled $400,000 over four years. It was this big church. Every, every church is big in Texas. <laughs> okay, big. $400,000. That's God's money. That's God's money. Wow. And, uh, you know, from when I was a teenager, you know, God saved me, and, and I'm in youth group. <clears throat> I was working, and... When I gave in to the offering, that was God's money. And I remember I gave a 20, and then uh, 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 this guy I knew in youth group said, oh, you know, um, I, I need some help with this, that, and the other. And, uh, and, so, and so it's like I couldn't just take that money back out of the offering, but I went to the youth pastor and said, hey, this is so-and-so's need. I know now this is God's money. But he was the pastor, and he said, you know what? It's okay. We can take that money out. We're going to help, help, help him out with it. It's God's money. Folks, let me, I'm going to take another detour, <laughs> unplanned. I rem there are churches who will starve their pastor out because they don't like him, so they will withhold tithes and offerings. It's like, folks, the money isn't yours. It's the Lord's. And there is a holy fear, you know, it's like, this is, this is God's money, this is God's property, we want to take care of it. And so, 
um, there's a difference between, and then, you know, nowadays, uh, I, anyway, I'll just say this. There's a difference between a pastor making a living or an evangelist making a living and fleecing the sheep <laughs> out of money. Folks, that's a scary thing. You can read in Jude, you can read it in 2 Peter about ministers who, like Balaam, have, you know, coveted money and have gone off the path. Folks, that's a, that's a dangerous thing. That's a dangerous thing. And uh, now, anyway, I better, I'll just stop there. So we can, we can actually steal God's money. Um, anyway, there, there's other examples of, of people I know, anyway, of, of know who is in the church where, where a family member of the pastor was part of the board and, and they were, they were uh, uh, when the offerings were being done, they were, they were taking money out. It's like, folks, that's scary to me. That's scary. That's very scary. So you can actually steal God's gold. And do you know you can steal God's glory? You can steal God. God said, I will not share my glory with another. I will not share my glory. Exodus uh, 30 and verse 32 and following says this. Do not, okay, this is talking about the sacred anointing oil. God gave this formula. You're supposed to make it. And God says this. Do not pour it on anyone else's body. And do not make any other oil using the same formula. It is sacred and you are to consider it sacred. Whoever makes perfume like it and puts it on anyone other than a priest must be cut off from the people. Yeah, you know how that interprets to our day and age? You know, God, God puts his anointing on people. And when, when the men and women of God begin to use that anointing for personal gain or personal fame or whatever it might be, that is stealing the glory of God. And God isn't going to stand for that. Folks, many ministries have fallen, you know, even, you know, in, in, you know, in our, our day and time because they began, they began taking the glory. It's gone to their head and, and, they're, and they're using the anointing for personal gain, whether relationships or fame or doing this and that. And that's, that is stealing. Okay. Um, Stealing God's girls or guys, <laughs> okay? This is First uh, Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 2. For you know what instructions we gave you by the authority of the Lord Jesus. It is God's will that you should be sanctified, that you should avoid sexual immorality, that each of you should learn to control your own body in a way that is holy and honorable, not in passionate lust like the pagans who do not know God. And that in this matter, no one should wrong or take advantage of a brother or sister. The Lord will punish all those who commit such things, sins as we told you and warned you before. Eli's sons, they were sleeping with, okay, here, okay, they're, they're the big shots, okay, they're the PKs, okay, if you want to call them PKs. And the, the women who were helping out in the ministry of the Lord, they were sleeping with them. And, and not only that, they were stealing from God. They would, you can read about in the Bible that when, when the Israelites uh, brought an offering, a, a portion of it was to be burned up and a portion of it would go to the, go to the priests. And, and they said, they were, they were like, no, we, we basically want it all. You know, and, and, and Eli, he grew, he grew big and heavy over that. And, and, uh, but anyway, you can, you can read about that in, in 1 Samuel. And folks, God made sure, he, they struck them dead. They were stealing from God. And folks, it happens in churches. Um, a lot of times what happens is, and it can go either way, a girl being attracted to a, a man who, they're spiritual, 
Their spouse at home is not very spiritual. And so they begin to pursue the man of God or the, or the other way around. A man sees, oh, this lady is spiritual. My wife at home is not. And so they begin, and folks, that's, that's stealing God's girls or guys. And uh, that's coveting, it's stealing, and God says, uh, those who commit such, uh, let's see, the Lord will punish all who commit such sins. Okay, so we need to be careful of, of coveting. And so actually, it was really easy, you know, as a pastor, a long time ago, they said, you got to be careful of the gold, the glory, and the girls. <laughs> okay, and, and uh, the lust of the eyes, the lust of the flesh, pride of life. Okay, Joshua's actions as a leader was not right. He needed to get a grip. What did he do? So, um, let's see. Let's see, let me get to the blank. Okay, so what did he do? He falls on his face, and he's saying, Oh, Lord, we should have never even came across the Jordan. You brought us here to kill us, and oh, blah, 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 blah. And what did God say? Stand up. What are you doing on your face? Because as a leader, um, he needed to get a grip and not think that God was failing them, but that they had failed God. Folks, if God's promises don't seem to be working in your life, don't get on your face and say, oh, woe's me. We need to say, search me, O oh Lord. The problem is never going to be with God. It's always going to be on this end. Let God be true and every man a liar, the Bible says. You know, God is faithful. God is faithful. You know, Paul sought the Lord when he was ill. And, and he knew that it would not be, the issue wasn't with God. Paul was being attacked, and God was using it to teach Paul a lesson that when he's going through struggles in life, when he's going through hardships, that it's an opportunity for God to show his power. And also, Paul realized that he had such amazing spiritual experiences that God was using it to keep him humble. And so, folks, if you're going through trials and God's word doesn't seem to be working, the best thing you can do is say, God, what, how, what am I doing wrong? What's wrong? And maybe God, Paul wasn't doing anything wrong, but maybe the Lord just wants to teach you a spiritual lesson. Maybe he wants to show you something in your life. I don't know, but it's never God, folks. That is a, it, it is a, is a, it's a bad perspective to say God is failing, God is unfaithful, God's not keeping his promises. He brought us here to kill us, okay? And, and God was not happy with Joshua, and he said, get up. So if you are becoming soured at God because he seems to be not doing what he said he would do, do not sin by speaking against God, but humble yourself, and he will show you the reason. Amen? He will show you the reason. So the leader didn't need to humble and repent. The leader needed to take care of the sin in the camp. Joshua did not need to repent. Okay? And so um, they need to deal with sin. And you know what? The whole community needed to be involved in taking care of the sin. They all did. Um, when we read, in, and it, it's the same today too, in 1 Corinthians um, we can read, let's see, did I put it in there? Let me see the next verse. Nope, didn't. Okay. Um, in 1 Corinthians, we read about that there's sin going on in the church. It's sexual immorality. It's, it's incest. It's bad. And the church is putting up with it. And God, are, you know, the, 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 Paul, by the Holy Spirit, says, this is what you need to do. You need to expel this guy. Don't even eat with the person. Stay away from them, okay? And we read that it's, it's not like cults do in manipulating and shunning and, and that kind of thing, 
But what it, what it was doing that if you allow sin to continue in the church, other people in the church are going to think, oh, well, that's okay, I can do that too. It's not bad. And then it's going to give the Lord a bad name in the community because they're going to be like, you know, in the bar or, or you know, or, or at work. Hey, do you know what's going on in that church or that person did, right? And it's not going to do the person who's sinning any good because they're, you know, they're, they're not going to stop and think what I'm doing is wrong, but they're going to be like, oh, well, this is okay. I can do this. And so church discipline needs to take place, but often what happens is that the whole church ends up not being involved and, 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 it, and it, it, it doesn't go well. And so um, we need to be careful uh, so God, we read, ends up giving Israel the victory after they got rid of that which was devoted to destruction. Um, you know, if you, uh, if you were to read, um, well, we have been reading through it, uh, there's two examples, two people and two families. The first family was Rahab, a woman of faith, and she saved her family. Achan, a man of sin, brought judgment on his family. The Holy Spirit gave us those right back to back, back to back. Now, it's interesting to, to note that guess what, ladies? In the judgment that took place on Achan, the wife was not involved. <laughs> it was him and his sons and daughters. Now, lest you think little tiny kids, remember, God is just. And, and what I believe the, the, the tents were these big tents. We're not talking these little four-man tents you get from Walmart. We're talking these big family tents. They set up, it was like a house. And everybody knew that dad buried the Babylonian garment and the gold and the silver that belonged to God right in the middle of the house. There it was. And I'm kind of thinking that Either the wife said, this is wrong, I'm not having any part of this, and she went to her sister's tent <laughs> to stay. I don't know what happened. Or in the adult children, they helped dig a hole, and they said, hey, you know, they were greedy too. I don't know, but the wife isn't listed. God is just, and Achan and those in his family involved ended up being totally given over, just like the city of destruction, and they died. And um, you know what? Um, in, in this account, I read Joshua. He's, he was, he was uh, oh, what's he, uh, discipled under Moses. Moses loved the people. And you know when the people sinned, what Moses would do? He'd intercede for them, right? He said, Lord, blot out my name from your book. And the Lord said, no, I'm not going to blot your name. But that's an amazing thing to say, God, I'd rather go to hell and have these people saved. Okay, that's amazing love. And, and Joshua, he was raised with that. And, and you see Joshua addressing Achan, and he says, my son, you know, tell me what you did. He's being, being very loving, very pastoral, but his, his uh, uh, change in demeanor, or his demeanor changes when the goods are brought out. Because if you, if you look at, let's see, and I'm sorry I don't have it down, but in my studies I came across the actual weight of the silver and gold, and it's not much. 36 people, 36 innocent soldiers were killed because of this man. Because of his sin, it caused 
the, the army of Israel to lose heart. Because of his coveting, it, it caused not only 36 soldiers to die, but, but the enemy to gloat, okay? And when, when the goods is brought out, a robe, a little bit of silver, and, and it's really a, a little tiny bar of gold, and then Joshua says this. He went from being pastoral to, why have you brought this trouble on us? The Lord will bring trouble on you today because it was so petty. It was so insignificant that this man condemned himself. His family caused harm to, to Israel, brought shame, and 36 people died over a garment and, and, and some glittering rocks? you got to be kidding me. But you know what? I, I, you know, in, in preparing for this message and kind of meditating on this, every person that stands before the Lord who sold their soul because they coveted for something, whether it was fame, whether it was another person they wanted, or whether it was uh, more money or status, whatever it was, it's all going to look like that stupid garment and a little bit. It's, it's all going to be petty that they threw their life away for all eternity because they coveted this insignificant stuff. It's all going to be petty. And you know what? Look at chapter 8, and verse 1, very next chapter. Then the Lord said to Joshua, Do not be afraid, do not be discouraged. Take the whole army with you and go up and attack Ai. For I have delivered, it, uh, delivered into your hands the king of Ai, his people, his city, and his land. And now look at this. God already said the first city's mine. L look at this. This is just, this is just blows, blows my mind. You shall do to Ai and its king as you did to Jericho and its king, except that you may carry off their plunder and livestock for yourselves. Unbelievable. The guy was so inflamed with desire, coveting, lust, I just have to have it. He just needed to wait till the next day. And he could have got a lot of garments. He could have got all kinds of things. And brought it home and his whole family could have enjoyed it. Isn't that unbelievable? Unbelievable. It's just what lust, what coveting will do to lose out with God. And so um, we need to be careful. We can, we'll lose out with God. We'll bring shame to his name will cause others to lose out too, our family to lose out. Folks, if, if there is something that you feel you just have to have, you need to, to get to the cross. You know, the, the Bible says that sin shall not have dominion over you, for you're not under law, but you're under grace. Grace not to sin, but grace to be forgiven and have grace to walk on and, and live a holy life. Praise the Lord. We're saved by grace, but we can't, we can't live in sin. And so what we need to do when something seems to be getting a hold of us is get before the Lord, confess our sin to him, and say, Jesus, do that work of surgery in my heart, the circumcising of the heart. Cut that thing out of me and, and then go on in forgiveness, go on in grace, and, uh, but praise the Lord. And I'm going to say this. This man has never had to worry about a diet. <laughs> okay? I've never had to worry about a diet. And I take after my mom. Now, there has been times, in all honesty, I have coveted, and I am serious. I know I've been in a food line, and I'm like, I remember specifically I was in this food line, there was one piece of cherry pie left, and I wanted that cherry pie so bad. And I'm like, if anybody takes that cherry pie, I'm going to be so upset. 
And I realized, Brett, you are lusting. You are coveting after that cherry pie. And I had to ask the Lord for forgiveness. I did. You may think that's silly, but that's true. Now, I'm going to say this, and I'm going to ask for forgiveness right up front. I was talking to a sister in the Lord uh, about, about dieting. And it was okay, it was Carla, all right? I just, so, so you're not thinking it was my wife. Okay, so, um, but anyway, we, we were talking about it, and she said, oh, you know, I can't, I, I didn't want to go to this function. It's going to be too tempting. And I said, I said you know, Carla, I, I never had to deal with dieting, and um, I enjoy food. But, you know, I, I wonder if, just like, okay, we need to be careful as Christians that we don't try to overcome sin according to our own means, okay? That's what the Galatians ended up falling into, that trying to live a holy life in our own strength. And so I, I don't, I don't, okay, so what I'm getting at is this. I know that, <laughs> pray for me, wife, pray for me. Um, <laughs> I know that uh, our bodies change as we get older. I understand uh, you know, uh, you know, our uh, hormonal things and aging and, and, you know, it, it just, and, and so we end up gaining weight. Okay. That just happens to most people except some like me. All right. So, um, but, and so I, I'm not ever judging anyone. I'm not, but I wonder only, you know, is your diet because your body has changed and you're struggling with biological factors and in your body's like hard days are coming we're storing up we're storing up and you're like no no and your body's like no we got to store it up okay so if you're struggling with that that's one thing but you know you know if you have a lust for food do you eat because you're hungry and you need nutrition, or do you eat because you, you're, you enjoy the satisfaction and you're lusting after food? Folks, I can't judge, I'm not judging anybody, and, and, but this isn't talked about from the pulpit, but if that is your issue, that you're just, you like food, and, and it's get, got a hold of you, well, then you know what, folks? Honestly, you need to go to the cross. You know, the Bible says that it is for freedom that Christ has set you free. Therefore, do not allow yourselves to be burned under a yoke of slavery again. Folks, God wants you free. He wants you to enjoy food, but he wants you to have food. He doesn't want food to have you. And so, like I said, if you are dealing with a, 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 a really a covenant for food, and then that's something that you need to get to the cross and you need to say, Lord, cut that out of my heart, Holy Spirit, because the Bible says, put to death the misdeeds of the body uh, by the Spirit. By the Spirit, put to death the misdeeds. And so, folks, otherwise, as a Christian, you're going to keep struggling and struggling and struggling, and the Lord does not want you to be having your whole life all wrapped around a diet and what can I eat and can't eat and all this stuff. It's like, folks, he wants you to think on, <laughs> you know, <laughs> he wants you to, you know, set your thoughts on, on things above, not be thinking about food all the time and struggling with food. Folks, I, I need to write a diet book. Get to Jesus, <laughs> you know, go to Jesus, be honest with yourself and, and God will help you. Amen. He'll help you. And so praise the Lord. Um, I think that's the end of the message. <laughs> Folks, I, uh, I struggled uh, in, in consolidating. I did a lot of studying. I have pages and pages. I, I, you know, I put in a lot of study and, about this, but then I've been, taking, I've been taking allergy pills, and it just so messed up my head, and I've been so tired and just been hard. And so, um, so I pray, Lord, give me grace to say just what I need to say. And I didn't have diet written in here, and I talked about it, so God wanted me to talk about it. Let's all stand. <laughs> all right. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Ah. Love covers over a multitude of sins. <laughs> Let's pray. Oh, precious Lord.
precious Jesus. Lord, you, you tell us in the New Testament, Lord, to not love the things of the world. For the lust of the eyes, the pride of life, Lord, uh, the lust of the flesh, the, the things of this world are passing away. Uh, but Lord, he who does the will of God lives forever. And, and Lord, your word tells us in 1 John that, that God, that, that is not from you. We can enjoy the things of the world, but Lord, you don't want us to, to love the things of this world, to lust after the things of this world. And, and Lord God, it's just such a sad, sad story in your word. And Holy Spirit, you left it to, to, for us to learn from that God is just so sad. This, this man Achan, he, he coveted. He coveted what was yours, and it cost him so dearly. And Lord God, if there's anything in our lives, Lord, if we are coveting, Lord, maybe it is, oh, I just have to have, you know, uh, this status or this possession or, or whatever it might be, Lord, or even this person. I just have to have this person in my life. Lord God, Lord, if there's anything, Lord, right now, God, we ask for your forgiveness. Lord Jesus, I pray that you would give us all grace to be honest with ourselves. Lord, even if it has to do with food, to be honest with you and say, Lord, I got a problem with this. It's a heart problem. It's a desire problem. And Lord, I thank you for forgiveness. I thank you for the cross. Lord, I thank you for the blood. I thank you for your righteousness credited to me. But Lord, do that surgery in my heart. Holy Spirit, give me grace to walk in freedom, not in bondage. And Lord, you'll do that work of grace in us. But Lord, help us to know, Lord, this is a serious thing. And I, and I, I hit on so many different topics. But God, give us grace. Give us wisdom. Thank you for your word. Thank you for your people, Lord. I pray blessing, encouragement. Lord, give us a good rest of the week. We love you and we give you praise, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, God bless you.